Hi, it's Giselle Wertheim Ains from Longevity Live. And today I have with me Dr. Yael Joffe. And uh, certainly been a stalwart in our industry for a long time, but very interestingly today, we're going to talk to Dr. Joffe about genetics and specifically around what you could learn from your genes and how they could help you um, manage, at least prepare for, um, I would say, building your immunity, not necessarily you know, having to deal with COVID specifically, but obviously there is a link between positive and strong immunity and the COVID um, virus. And Dr. Joffe is a co-founder of Three Times Four Genetics. Um, she's also their chief scientific medical officer. So welcome. So maybe we can just start the conversation um, with really this discussion around genes. I know we all have a general understanding that our genes have a huge bearing to play on our health in general. But perhaps you can explain why you think specifically um, they would have a great deal of influence over our immunity right now. Fantastic. Thank you. That's, that's a great place to start. So I want to just raise two issues around genetics. The first thing is that we're all different from each other. And, and one of the key questions I always get asked is, why are people have a different susceptibility to COVID, either in getting it or how we respond to it? That is the question I keep asking. So let's just understand this concept of, of, of variability, of variance, of being different. So we're 99.9% .9 in our DNA code, we're identical, but there's this 0.1% that makes you different from me and me different from all the people that might be watching this. And this means that we look different, we, our height is different, we exercise differently, we suffer from stress differently, but we also respond differently to our environment. So what we eat, how we exercise, how we endure the lockdown, all of us will have a different reaction and a large component of that is genetic. And this is in our DNA code. So it's in our sequence of our code that will tell us something about why I respond in one way and you respond in that way. So that's one element of genetics. But there's another very exciting part of genetics and that says that when we interact with our environment, and that could be a food we eat, some exercise that we do, a supplement we take, um, some meditation that we do. When we interact with our environment, those choices that we make will switch on or switch off genes in a certain way to either optimize our health and optimize our immunity or to have the opposite effect and actually diminish our immunity. So we're interested in DNA sequence code, code, excuse me, but we're also interested in how do we optimize our immunity by switching on and switching off the right genes? So that's a great place to start. Sure. And it sounds quite complex, this idea of how you could switch them on and switch them off. But you're going to explain to me exactly what you mean. Yeah. that. I am. So this, this is actually the most exciting part of nutrition. You know, I'm, I'm, I was a dietitian before I became a geneticist. And I was so frustrated because all I was taught was like dietary guidelines and you could have this much protein and this much fats and every plate looked the same and every pyramid looked the same. And we knew that, you know, I always had the sense that there was something wrong with this picture because I knew I was different and I knew everyone else was different. So what I, what, what I really wanted to understand is what is the right diet look like for the right person at the right time? And what is the right food and the right nutrient? And how should I cook it? And how should I buy it? And how should I prepare it? And what we started discovering is that there's something called bioactives. Now, bioactives are molecules in food. So you're probably very familiar with vitamin C and vitamin D, and especially now that you're hearing this so much. But what these molecules can do is they can actually switch on and switch in genes. So you've probably heard of the word epigenetics. Yes. And that's actually what I'm talking about. Epigenetics is when something in our environment, be it a food we eat or something we're exposed to, comes into our body and switches on or switches off genes. And remember, when we switch on genes, those genes go on to make proteins, which are actually things like enzymes. So enzymes actually make our body work. It could be hormones that it switches on. It could be neurotransmitters in our brain. So imagine now we could design a diet for you where we're using nutrients that you're eating to be able to switch on or switch off genes. So not just to plug holes like vitamin C deficiency, but actually to optimize your body by enabling your genes to switch on. Now I'm gonna say one more thing before you ask the next question. One of the issues I had around immunity is that actually our bodies know how to heal themselves. 
Nature and our bodies are quite brilliant in having systems inherent, what we call our inbuilt cellular defense mechanisms. So we have them inside us. They're part of our cells and they are able to defend themselves against the environment. And that might be a pesticide or a, a pollutant, but it also could be something like a virus or a pathogen. And what we need to figure out is how do we get our bodies to switch on the right genes so that our bodies can heal and optimize health, not going to the shop around the corner and buying every supplement off the shelf and hoping that that's the solution. So what we're trying to do with nutrigenomics, which is what we call this field of science, is how do we optimize the body with nutrition to enable the body to heal itself or bolster its immune system to be able to fight off the kind of things we're seeing in our environment at the moment. So, yeah, the, the way that I would read that is that I might respond very differently to eating or needing broccoli than someone next to me, but we all know the concept of we should be eating certain foods because they're healthy. Or my body might be able to process that food in a different, better or worse, depending on my gene profile or depending on a whole lot of other factors. So, because I always had the thought that why don't we just know? Why don't our bodies just tell us? Do, do we need a gene test to tell us that we can, you know, we, that, that, that that particular vitamin is what will switch on that or this? I'm just quite intrigued. I'm not sure why our bodies don't know. That's a great question. I think we might have known um, a while back, um, but not in our Western civilization. That, that I think has been that kind of nuanced signaling has been wiped out. But I love the fact that you raise uh, the question of broccoli. And I love the fact that you asked the question, a lot of people say to me, well, we all know we need broccoli, so why do I need to know that I need broccoli, right? So I wanna talk about broccoli for one minute. <laughs> so the first is, let's talk about where, where I started the conversation. I started the conversation saying, we look at our DNA sequence, which is a genetic test, to understand more about myself. I then use nutrition to upregulate genes. Okay, I'm gonna use the story of broccoli. So one of the most important cellular processes in our body is detoxification. Now this is not a, a juice fast. Detoxification is a process in our body that happens every single nanosecond of every day of our entire lifetime. lifetime. And it's responsible for everything that is coming into our body from our environment, as well as metabolites that our body is producing that we need to clear. And we have two phases. And we want to make sure that things like estrogen metabolites or what we call endocrine disruptors, you know, the plastic bottles that we, we drink from, or pollution exposure, or even the COVID virus actually causes a lot of damage in the body that needs to be cleaned and removed. This is detoxification. Now, there's a whole bunch of genes that determine our detox, and some of us are more optimal than others. By looking at your genes, I'm giving you the quick version, by looking at your genes, we're able to determine whether you're a fantastic, really awesome detoxifier or whether it's looking a bit sluggish. Now, if it's looking a bit sluggish from your genes, your genes are telling us you didn't inherit the best set of detox genes, so we need to do something because we want to make sure that your body can detoxify optimally. And what we do there, we say, what are the foods that can switch on the genes that switch on my detox? You know what the answer is? The answer is broccoli. And the reason it's broccoli is broccoli has a compound called glucoraphanin. It's a bit of a mouthful. I mean, glucoraphanin interacts with um, an enzyme called bioinrosinase, all sitting in the broccoli plant. And you chew it, and it's raw, raw. It produces this beautiful, magical compound called sulforaphane. And sulforaphane has the ability to switch on a master switch. Remember I said switching on and switching off? There is a master switch, one of many, called NRF2. And when this beautiful broccoli molecule, sulforaphane, switches on NRF2, it switches on 2,000 defensive genes. Wow. So by <laughs> eating broccoli, we produce sulforaphane, it switches the master switch. Maybe you go into your house and you put on one switch and all the lights come on. It's the same thing. Go in, you switch on the master switch, NRF2, and it's detox genes, it's antioxidant genes, it's oxidative stress genes, it's methylation genes. So when we talk about broccoli, yes, broccoli is good for you, but how really important is it for you? And, and is one portion enough a day? Is two or three? 
do we need to get you a broccoli, a, a bro a, a broccoli sprout supplement? Because actually you can't eat enough raw broccoli. And so this is why genetics is so insightful because we can get into that real personalization and then we can start using a nutrient like this broccoli sprout sulforaphane to switch on these genes that can then boost your immune system and also heal your body. Mm. Now that's so interesting. And I think that really talks to this idea of more precision um, health and also health for the individual because I know you would get to that to explain that we are all different. Um, we don't all respond exactly, exactly the same. So we're sitting obviously at a time and I think people are very fearful um, of COVID, um, even though there is this general umbrella of, well, if you've got this, that, that, or you're that age, whatever, then you'll be more susceptible. But I think I, I don't know anyone who is, hasn't got a level of anxiety, even healthy people um, around the COVID. So how, how do you think knowing your genes um, would assist you in, in, in being able to fortify perhaps your health at this time? So, so I mean, that's 100%. You know, it's actually interesting. It's the first time we're seeing healthy people having anxiety about health. And we always used to say, like, how do we get people who are healthy on. And, and so we're starting to see a real interest in saying, okay, I know I'm healthy right now, but how do I build my, a, a, a kind of an immunity or defense against what could happen? So I'm not going to talk about underlying health condition or age or any of things that put some individuals, let's assume a baseline of health. So we talk about this, talk about upstream medicine, which is let's go and look at the cellular level, how we can make our bodies healthy. Let's not worry about a disease condition like diabetes. Let's think, how do I make every single cell in my body as healthy as can be? And then we look and we say, well, actually, there are four key processes that determine how healthy every single cell is. Now, remember, an immune system, a cardiovascular system, a respiratory system, they all made up of groupings of cells, which come together, groupings of tissues and groupings of organs. These four processes are detoxification. How do I clear toxins? radicals which are kind of attacking our cells all the time how do i minimize that when when your body invaded COVID, there is a huge oxidative stress component so you want to make sure your oxidative stress is fighting fit to be able to diminish that response number three inflammation inflammation in COVID is probably the most powerful because what happens is when the virus gets into the body if, remember we spoke about master switches, the virus acts like a master switch and switches on almost every inflammatory gene we have in our body and causes this, this like overwhelming war of inflammation. And that's what actually causes a lot of the side effects of COVID. So how do we, how do we prime my body to be able to minimize the damage of inflammation? And the last one is called methylation. Probably the trickiest one to understand from the word, but it's really about protecting our DNA. How do we make new healthy DNA? Because we're making new DNA all the time. And how do we repair damaged DNA? Because when you have this inflammation, oxidative stress, it damages your DNA. But our body has amazing enzymes to come and repair it. Methylation is the process of repairing our DNA and thereby keeping our DNA and our cells constantly healthy. So what we say is if we want to build, bolster our immune system, to either decrease our susceptibility of contracting COVID, but if we do contract it, why does one person respond worse than another? Aside from, if, if, assuming we're healthy, we need to look at these four processes. We need to make sure they are fighting fit, that they are optimally functioning. Now, the genetic test we use identifies the genes involved in these pathways, in these cellular processes, to determine where you are in that optimal versus maybe not so optimal that I was talking about in detox. And then when we know where you're sitting in that range of optimal, suboptimal, we then can start curating this really precision nutrition plan for you to optimize those processes. We want your body to have the best inflammatory response, the best oxidative stress, the best detox, the best methylation, that whether it's a pathogen like COVID or anything else that comes into your body, or even the stress that you're all under, we want you to be able to fight it, not because we're shoving supplements into you, 
but because your body is enabled, it's like the nature of your body is enabled to fight it. And that all makes a huge amount of sense to me, to hurt me. I mean, I actually have done some genetic tests, um, quite a few actually, <laughs> probably do many, but, and it's been a very interesting journey for me because I've learned, you know, quite a lot about things that, uh, you know, I thought worked from a nutrition point of view and actually weren't working for me at all. So that makes, on a personal level, very sensible. But I guess for a lot of people, this idea of having to spend money on something that maybe is, we can see the value of it. How do you, how, how does, how, how do we, how do we, I wouldn't say convince, but what is the mitigation for doing the test, doing the genetic test? So how do we validate that when we're all probably under quite a bit of pressure now and, and, and these yeah. tests can be quite expensive? And maybe you can talk a little bit because really it boils down to that. And then, you know, what is the upside? So what is the, you know, what, to me it would be quite simply that you'd probably save a lot of money and drama in the long run, but maybe you could answer that from a scientific perspective maybe. Yeah, I mean, that is exactly the answer. So, so we have something that we talk about the genes first approach, which is most practitioners uh, were trained in the trial and error approach, which is, I'll try this, I'll see if it responds well, come back to me, we'll change it, come back to me, we'll change it. And we're saying, well, that's got a huge cost, psychologically, behaviorally, on your self-esteem, there's a sense of failure, but also on your pocket, because every time you come back, it's more tests and it's more consults. And uh, for me, actually, psychologically is most devastating of, I tried something, it didn't work, I failed, I need to come back. So we're saying, you know, if 50% of who we are as a person is our genetics, why would you start without knowing about yourself? Now, the great thing about genetics is it's a once-off. You do the test, you don't do it a second time. It's not like a blood test that you go back every couple of months. So it's a once-off test. So it's an investment to understand who you are as a baseline before you start making decisions. And you're not going to do it again in six months or a year or, or in two years' time. So we say like the amount of, of, of loss, of opportunity uh, cost in terms of money, time, and remember, psychological and behavioral loss because when you come to me as a practitioner you are ready to change you are ready mm -hmm. and you're not going to be like well we're going to give it a shot we'll try this you know you change your life you redo your 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 um, pantry and you come and say well that actually felt terrible so i'm saying if 50 percent of the information that you need to know to get it right is not known up front why would you why would you do that so i'm a big fan it, it, you know of Genes first, test up front, know who you are. The second thing I would say is work with a practitioner who is highly skilled and trained in this area. Because if you spend 4,000 Rand on a genetic test and the practitioner, so never buy a genetic test that doesn't have a practitioner because you're getting data. You're not getting yeah, when you And yeah, when you say practitioner, do you mean medical doctor or what do you mean by that? So most of our practitioners are actually dietitians, um, naturopaths, um, doctors, so nutritionists. Okay. So they are, we have a network in the country of about 160 practitioners who've gone through extensive education. They have to do a full course before they can even start working with our test, uh, a full mentorship program, and they go into a network of mentorship. They all have a medical degree. So it's either dietetics or it's going to be some BSc medical degree. But they don't learn about genetics in university. So we make sure they have to study afterwards. Because what you want to make sure is they can take that genetics, they can understand who you are, what you're looking for, what your goals are, what your history is, what you're presenting with, and they can combine the genetics together with who you are and come up with recommendations. Genetics by itself is data and it's expensive data. So if you do not have an, a, a practitioner who has experience and, ex, and, and ex expertise in this, you're still wasting your money. So the question is not about the cost of the test. The question is about the value. And if that is not sitting who you are and translate it to make it meaningful, then you still shouldn't be spending the money. Okay. So we're actually interested. We're an education first company because we actually want understanding your genes. So say like, so what must I do with this genetic result? Well, what must I do right now? And that comes to that nutrigenomics. How do I use nutrition to optimize my health, optimize my immunity? Perfect. 
So if we want to get more information on this, I know you have a website. I mean, if it, first of all, thank you very much. That's really interesting. And um, I think the challenge always for a consumer is to work out who to use, what is out there, who's better, because it all, it's like going into, you know, it's not like it's a difficult shop to go into and buy because it is genetics. Okay. It's not <laughs> a simple well, thing. I'll give you some guidelines. So obviously, I mean, so one is personally, never buy a genetic test directly. If there isn't a practitioner involved, it's just data. There are a couple of companies in South Africa who have practitioners. Find out who the practitioners are and what training they've had. In able to, to, to be able to, to really work with you, to be able to maximize your value. And then you can ask other things like, what do you do with my DNA? Do you destroy it? What happens with my results? Who's gonna feed back to me? Um, what kind of information I'm gonna get? So don't be afraid to ask questions it's your DNA and you want to make sure that you're getting the best, best value out of it. So I would say practitioner first is the most important thing. If you fight the right practitioner, they will determine that you have the right test. That is the most important thing. What education have they been given to be able to work with it? And there's not thousands of them in South Africa. I mean, there's all around the world. They are highly skilled practitioners. And the other one is don't be afraid to ask questions. Where's the lab? What do you do with my DNA? What does your science team look like? How did they build it? Ask what you need to ask. And don't be afraid because at the end of the day, you own your DNA. You own it. Sure. And you want to make sure that someone is respecting what that is and helping you to achieve the maximum value from it. Perfect. Thank you so much. I do think that it's certainly a very um, viable idea right now. Um, know your genes, improve your nutrition so that you can have a strong immune system. And thank you very much. And just if um, anyone wants to look for more information, it's www.3, as in the number three times, wow. as in the number four, genetics.com. So www.3 times four genetics.com. Thank you so much and take care. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs>